All right, so uh, this is the first meeting of uh, Crucial Python. Uh, we're going to meet every Friday at 1 p.m. Um, for 10 minutes just to cover some of the cooler and more useful aspects of Python. Um, since this is our first meeting, I figured I would start by demoing uh, development environment, and uh, I'm going to demo my current favorite. And I think a lot of people in the room use it. Uh, it's called IPython Notebook. Um, it's a sort of a development environment that sits on top of IPython, which is uh, a modified version of Python that has a lot of additional useful stuff. Um, so I, Python Notebook actually runs in your browser. Um, the way to start it up is uh, from the command line, and it'll pop open the uh, this kind of dashboard in your browser of choice. And then um, you'll see a list of the notebooks that you have available, and you can load them up and edit them and view them and all that good stuff. So let's see, here's our logo. <laughs> um, so IPython Notebook is a cell-based development environment, um, so it's kind of like Mathematica or uh, MATLAB cell mode if you use any of those. Uh, and the idea is that there are little blocks of code, each in different individual cells, um, and uh, you can run the cells in arbitrary order, and the order in which you run them uh, matters. So you can define a function, run some code using it, and then redefine it, run the code again. Um, and uh, in IPython notebook, cells can either be code or, uh, or text. Um, and everything you see on the screen is IPython notebook. Uh, and, and for example, these cells here are text cells. So this one is kind of being used as documentation. Um, if you double click on it, you can see the contents of the cell. And uh, you can see that you can use markdown syntax. Um, and also, you can use LaTeX syntax to um, to include math, so which is useful for scientific computing. Um, and uh, so here is just a simple function I made. It computes the sum of squares of an array. Uh, and I can uh, run this block of code. So now the function is defined within the currently running Python kernel. Um, and, and then I can use it and you know get the output. Uh, and you see it's it's telling me that the third output that has occurred since the session started is 35. And this out variable is actually a, a Python variable that's available to you in your environment. So you can actually do things like retrieve previous outputs and uh, add things to them and print it out. So here I've gotten this 35 variable from the output array and added 4 to it. Um, and one nice thing about IPython Notebook is that you can actually make um, matplotlib and other plotting environments, you can make their output appear inline in your notebook file. So one way to do that is to start it up with this pylab inline flag. Um, and uh, so here's just an example where I'm going to plot a sine wave. And this shows up right in the notebook. It's a PNG file that I can, you know, now save if I want to or, you know, email it to someone or whatever. So like any good IDE, IPython Notebook has uh, good tab completion. And uh, um, so for example, if I import a module like SciPy Signal, um, then I can start typing in a function and uh, tab complete to get candidate functions. And then once I've chosen a function, I can uh, it'll, it'll give, give me a portion of the doc string. And if I hit tab again, it'll start to show the entire help uh, for that function. Um, and if you start entering, entering arguments, um, you can also access keyword arguments um, with tab completion, which is super useful. Uh, and you can also just get help on the functions in the traditional way, which will dump it out into your, uh, into your notebook file. Um, one of the really cool things about IPython, and, uh, and which is accessible by IPython notebook, are magics. Uh, and magics are, um, I, are only available in IPython. They're not something that's Python native, um, and they're denoted by these percentage signs. Um, so one of the useful magics that I use a lot is time it, which essentially wraps Python's uh, timing functionality. And uh, time it here, you can see, is using a single percentage sign, which means it's a line magic. And basically what it does is it runs um, all the code after the, the time it magic gets run a bunch of times by time it. And uh, it basically gives you a estimate of how long it will take to run by running it tons of times. So if we run NumPy's a range uh, function and x, the x range iterator uh, basically says that uh, it ran a range 100,000 times and it took about 2.7 microseconds each time it ran it and it uh, ran x 
range a million times and it took 294 nanoseconds so as you might expect x range is faster because it's not actually allocating any arrays uh, related and a little more in depth is uh, p run or prune which uh, which is just used as python's profiler to do a quick profile of some some code and that's that's a two percentage sign so it's a cell magic so if i run p rune with a FFT can evolve, then this little frame pops up down here. It basically says, okay, it took 0.342 seconds to run, and this is how much time it spent in raw FFT, and uh, it took some time allocating zeros and so on. Uh, and this next example isn't a magic, but it's, um, it's still useful. You can just run shell commands from within IPython notebook. So here I'm just getting the contents of the current directory, and I can access that output as a... Uh, as a Python string. Um, the, uh, something that might be useful to those of you in the room who use MATLAB and are not totally committed to Python is uh, the Python MATLAB bridge. And actually, IPython has magics for a lot of different programming languages, including MATLAB, Mathematica, Octave, R, and uh, maybe others. But um, essentially, what you can do with the Python MATLAB bridge is start a MATLAB session in the background, and then you can access that session directly from um, IPython. And you can actually pass variables back and forth. So if I define a cutoff frequency here in Python, and then I use the MATLAB uh, cell magic with the input being my cutoff frequency variable and the output being my filter taps, then I can um, literally just call this MATLAB function fir1 with my cutoff frequency and uh, get the result be back into Python, and then using uh, SciPy and Matplotlib, I can plot out the frequency response. So, um, last thing I wanted to mention is the way that IPython outputs stuff when it's when you're running the notebook. Um, it uses these .ipynb files, which are mostly human-readable JSON, um, and all of the output uh, gets cached in the JSON files. Um, so those are those are human editable, human readable, and uh, and they include all of your output. Uh, it also auto saves regularly, which is useful. Um, if you use the script option, it'll output Py files, which are um, Python compatible in general, unless you use Magix. Um, you can uh, output HTML, PDF, LaTeX, and uh, also there's a useful tool that IPython makes available, um, which essentially takes a publicly viewable IPython notebook file and renders it as HTML. So if, for example, I've created an IPython notebook and I want to show it to someone who doesn't have IPython notebook installed, I can put it on GitHub or wherever, and then I can load it up in NB Viewer. Um, and so here's the notebook that I've been showing you today. And uh, because all the output is cached, all of the images and, uh, and figures that I generated are available here. Um, and again, I don't need to have IPython notebook installed to see this. Um, so it's a really useful way to share your code with, with anyone. Um, so that's some of the basic stuff uh, about IPython notebook. Uh, thanks a lot.